dear friends, good evening. Thank you all for coming. Today we're going to talk about adversaries. And uh, this lecture <laughs> could be the whole speech for Rio. That's why I ask Waldo to keep it open because normally we think about adversaries as a third person, right? But I don't know if you heard some some people saying the Holy Father and saying deliver us from evil especially the one that still resides inside of us so let me read it that again constant exhaustion dissatisfaction and bad moods lives inside of who ourselves red are a big red flag or danger in our lives. So balance your activities. Go deep within. And you will perceive that you lack the nurturing and comforting of the spiritual bread. So that will resume. <laughs> that will just give the whole concept of it. But... Normally when we think about adversaries, we think about somebody else. And we think about specific people, but they can come in different shapes, gender, colors. And we always, always, always think about the first synonym that comes to our minds, which is enemies. The purpose today is just for us to get a different perspective from that because they are the quickest path to our spiritual growth. Because, let's think, uh, if you're gonna correct something, if you wanna know what is the traits of our personality that irritates people, or that's something that we need to correct, you're gonna ask your friend, do you think that your friend is gonna say right to your face, or he's gonna code the, the pill a little bit? It's gonna put some sugar on it. And if you go to your adversary, it's gonna tell it right to your face, straightforward. Of course, you have to have the guts to do that. But in that sense, he's helping a lot more than your best friend. Because he's telling you right off the bat, what's wrong with you? Either you accept it or not. But this is a truth, vision, external of what do you need to do or what is the thing that annoys him the most or her? So in that sense, adversaries are helpers. It's always, it, it, everything in our life is about focus. It's about the way we see things. We can see things through the lenses of negativity, which is deeply rooted inside our brains. Our brains are cable are wired to look at the um, enemy or to look at uh, some information that can cause some harm and then we're going to see the good side of it this is inside our system but it's all about focus if you understand that if you understand that we have this kind of way of understanding things way of perceiving a way of cataloging things inside our brain then you start training to get focus, to understand what's going on, what's there for me. If somebody comes and it's always against my ideas, what's there for me? Maybe to revise my ideas, some of them can be really bad. Maybe to understand where this, peop this person come from, but not to reject right off the bat, and that's what we always do, and that's what gives us some, so much trouble. So, it's interesting because here it didn't change. Nice. Come on. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? It's easy to love somebody that loves us, isn't it? So, and if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? So we, we 
preach every day that we try to do our best, we try to be on our best side, we try to help people, only the ones that we like, only the ones that are friendly to us, or have you ever went the extra mile to help somebody that mm, doesn't fit too much to my taste? It's not the, you know, less Coca-Cola of the desert, as we say. So it's not the person that I mm, really love it or really need it. That's the person. That's the time that you're really doing something great, trying to help somebody that maybe the last person that he wants to help him is you. And all of a sudden, he will see you as a friend that is there when nobody is. That's the thing. That's the most um, the ultimate challenge for us, the ultimate test. What would we, would we do suddenly by any circumstances if we had the possibility of deciding about the face of a person who causes many problems? Think about it. All of a sudden, that person then gives you a hard time that really is part of a nightmare. Your beloved boss or who else whoever gives you a hard time every single day, and all of a sudden you have his or her faith on your hands, what would you do? Yeah, you raise your eyebrows pretty much. And now what? Of course, our rational brain, because we are sitting inside a spiritual center and we're trying to get the best out of us, we're going to say, yeah, I'm going to try to see the best way of dealing with that. But I'm talking about when you are outside. When you're not thinking about, oh, I'm a spiritist. When you're just a regular D.I. Joe out there reacting to life. Because that's what we do. Most of the time we don't proact. We don't step forward and be prepared for things that come to us. When you're out there reacting to life to the volume of information that comes to us. And that person that really makes your life miserable, his fate all of a sudden comes to your hand. What would you do? Hard question, right? Tough question. Tough question. And maybe the other question is, if you do good, or if you do what you think that it should be done, how do you feel after that? You would feel relieved. You will feel that, oh, I did because I'm a spiritist, but it's deep inside of me, I'm, not, I'm still angry. Because think about it. That won't work. If you say it just because you want people to hear that you're so great and so good, that doesn't work. Because it comes from inside of us. We still have that energy, that feeling that will create, in the long term, a disease inside of us. Most of the problems that we have, we are the ones that create those. So if you're going to do something, think about it. Being peace with that. That's the only way. To love the enemy, hard. Do good to those who hurt you and mistreat us. How come? In general, we're going to say, impossible. This is only for God. God is the only one who forgives this way. No. That is a way. But the way is to change your view, to change your information, to change your perception about what an adversary is. Come on. No? Okay. You're not working with me today. No big deal. We always push it. What's that? Close it and open again? Yeah. Kind of. Oh, that's the reason? Okay. Just need to get my mouse back. Come on, buddy. 
There you go. Hello. You're there. Cool. All right. Maybe this time will work. Finger crossed, just like mine. <laughs> All right. So we see the adversary as an enemy. An enemy is some, someone who awakens us the most primitive feelings, fear, hatred, desire for revenge. This is not good, right? The lecture just said that to us. This is not good. In the face of an enemy, hands become cold, hearts beat hard, the blood pulsates and, and at the temples. And, what quest, and the questions that arise are how to act, what to do. Normally in the face of fear, in the face of some danger, we have the, our brain goes to the flight or fight mode. If you cannot do anything and he's still in front of you, you're going to fight. But if you have a chance, you're going to flight. You're going to run from the situation. You don't want to face it. So it's really hard when you understand somebody as an enemy because right off the bat, your physiology changes. Your heart starts beating fast. So you, you don't think anymore. You cannot use your, your heart, you cannot use your, your brain, because everything is taken by a primitive feeling of danger. Have you ever had a, a paper cut, and then for the whole day, all you feel is the paper cut? And interfere, because that's your brain saying, it is hurting, do something. Do something. I don't, I don't like to feel that, that pain. Do something. Put a Band-Aid. Oh, it's not working. Put something. So that's how pain interferes with us. And if you face somebody as an enemy, he's a walking, talking, living, breathing pain. <laughs> it's really hard. How can you forget somebody like, or forgive somebody like this? It's really hard. The answer to this question was given up by Christ. Love the enemy and those who persecute you. <clears throat> How? Still hard. Because if you present this scenario, still hard to do it. So we have to understand what love the enemy means. If somebody has an enemy in general, what aptitude he adopts? Most people keep the enemy permanently in their thoughts. So they remain a slave of the enemy. Again, focus. You wake up. You think about your boss. It's going to give you a hard time all day, every day. Guess what? That's going to happen. 100% that's going to happen. And I did, to my, I did that. I proved that to myself. I used to work at Disney as a photographer at Epcot. Epcot doesn't have too much shady place outside, only when you're inside. For some reason, I never got any assignment inside. So I was like really dark to a point that it looks like I took a picture with my wife, both uh, foot of us, me, mine and hers, and mine was like black. And her was no white. So that's the way it was. I was frying every day under the sun with the equipment that is really heavy. And every day I woke up and said, oh my God, that guy's going to give me another bad assignment. Then somebody at Morocco, at the World Showcase at Epcot, told me a sentence that is really powerful that calls, wassalam walaikum. May the peace be upon you. I could say that in Portuguese. I could say that in English. But in Arabic, yes. So every time I came to that base for photography, I look at the guy and say, wassalam walaikum. Less than a month after, I start getting inside assignments. Tell me if this something that is like, oh, that was your fate. No, it's energy. It's the energy that you put in somebody. It's little by little, he start feeling that. 
So if you have a bad enemy about your, uh, the person that is around you, you're going to keep this energy and you're going to keep this in your thoughts. So what's happened to your focus? You always focus on the negative side. How do spirits connect to us? By energy, frequency. You lower your frequency and you want to connect with high spirits. There's something wrong in your thought. That's not going to happen. You lower your energy, spirits with the same energy are going to connect to you. Oh, why, I'm so, why do I have all these thoughts? Why, why that happens to me? Well, right there. Because you keep thinking about your enemy. You don't want to see him in a different way. He's still in your thoughts every day, day in, day out. So that's the energy that you are nurturing, that you are polarizing your whole body and giving to the world. It's going to come back to you the same way. No other way. The wisdom of Jesus' proposal is the liberation of the bonds that bind us to our enemies. So when he said, forgive your enemies, it's pretty much, try to, you know, don't have this vicious connection to that. Because every time you think about it, you have so many uh, uh, bad uh, energy and it's so heavy, it's so powerful, that you, you become a slave of that. When Christ uttered the expression, loving the enemy, in fact, he offered a part of the of balance, a path of balance and serenity. At least try to don't think about it. All of a sudden, if you don't think all the time, the weight of this person start diminishing. It's getting lighter. And all of a sudden, you're going to see this person not with the same weight, with the same heaviness, and maybe as a human being. Wow, what a progress. There's no way for us to do something without trying to change our focus, trying to change the way, try to realize, realize how we think we see this person. There is no other way. That's two different ways of forgiving, and we need to know this. Noble and great, truly generous without any hidden thoughts, which delicately avoids hurting the self-esteem and sensibility of the ad adversary, even when that same adversary has no justification for his or her acts. Remember, every time you have a, a thought or a perception or you have a judgment about somebody, remember that you have a fingerprint. Your fingerprint is not equal to the other one on your side. What does that mean? It's your perception. It's not his. It's not hers. And your perception can be wrong. Meaning that, oh, he has no justification. Maybe he does. It's just that you don't assume. You don't see that. Your perception, in your understanding, you don't see that. It's not for you to see right now. And that's why we say, so be it, right? At the Spirit Center. Because if you can change the things right now, so be it. It's not giving up. It's, not, it's just don't try to change something that can, cannot be changed today. Maybe it can be changed tomorrow. But that's the conditional one. And that's what we use all the time. When someone who has been offended or think they're being offended impose humiliating conditions on the supposed adversary. Making felt, sorry, making felt the weight of the pardon, which can only cause further irritation instead of calming. So that is the but. In other words, this is the forgiving but. Yes, I forgive you, but. I, yeah, I give you my pardon, but. Or if. That's but and that's if. So we like to use those words, don't we? Why? If you forgive, you forgive. Period. There's no strings attached. Because it's, in your, it's from your part. 
if you put a strings attached to forgiveness, you put strings attached to something, then the other side will try to put to do the same. Why only him or only her can do this? I do it myself. Even if I don't express. So you are in a loop again. This won't be healed. It's just going to change the format. But the thing will be, still be there. And we'll still be fighting against something that we don't even know. Because in the beginning, we're not ready to forgive. We're not ready to understand the other part. We're just understanding ourselves. We have the self and we have the ego. Right? We need both. People say, oh, ego is bad. No, no, no. Ego is not bad. Ego is bad when it got sick. And then we call egoism. That's when the ego is got, got sick. So egoism. Look just for myself. I don't care about you. You hurt me. I'm gonna, gonna forgive you, but you have to be better. You have to prove yourself to me. We never said that to anybody, right? Good. Reconciliation with your adversaries. What is saying here is that forgive the person that is right on your side when you have when you still have time because all of a sudden this person cannot be there anymore we're seeing these days a lot of facebook videos about people that had a hard time with mom and dad or treat them bad and then mom and dad discarnate and they're right feeling sorrow feeling guilty feeling this and feeling that so pretty much it's if the person is right in front of you, or at your grasp, or you can call, do that right now. Don't let that grow. Because normally what's going to happen is, do while we're still together on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge. Who's the judge? Who's the judge? Ourselves. OK? And the judge may hand you over to the officer. Does again. Because we're the first ones to condemn ourselves. And you might be thrown into prison of ourselves. Because the main prison, we create you ourselves. We're behind bars that we create. And we don't know and we don't see that those bars are, this door is open. And it start, that, that is a Houdini uh, video that I brought once here. And uh, that says that Houdini, uh, you guys, the, the, you know the great magician, right? He was uh, accept a challenge to break free from a cell of one of the most difficult prisons to get out of. And he said, in one hour I'll be out. After an hour, trying, trying, he had a, a, a piece of metal inside of his belt. After one hour trying to cut the, the, the bar, he couldn't. He was all sweaty. After two hours, he collapsed, and he sat, and he hit his back to the door, and the door opened. It was always open. That's the way it is. The door is always open, but we create the bars. We create the prison. We think that it's locked because the way we think. Because the way we don't forgive ourselves. So here's another thing. To forgive somebody, you have to forgive yourself. I don't have anything to forgive myself. Really? Think twice. Think three times. We always have something to forgive ourselves. We always have something that we have to make peace with and first with within us so this is just that because we will not get out of that until we have paid the last penny what is the last penny it is the time that you finally forgive yourself 
It is the time that you finally say, I'm so tired of this. I need to change. And that's why we say that normally we, we learn by pain, not by love. Again, adversary, enemy, pain, <coughs> all bad things. But if you look on the other side of the mirror, they're all tools for growth. Because if you don't feel pain, you don't move from point A to point B. If you don't have an adversary, you're probably not going to figure it out what's wrong with you. So, are you guys with me so far? Do you agree with that? Thank you. In the act of pardon, as in general practice of good, that is not only moral effect, but also material effect. So that's another aspect of forgiving or not having enemies or trying to solve this problem in this incarnation. Because if somebody discarnate, goes to the spiritual world full of hate, do you think that this person will going to go and become an angel all of a sudden? And he, if this person hates you, he's going to go to Disneyland, right? He's going to go to water parks and have a good time. No, he's going to follow you. And every time you go down in your energy, he's going to connect to you. Yeah. Oh, I don't have luck. Yeah? Or you didn't have the knowledge, the time, and especially especially the spiritual intelligence to make peace of with this person. Maybe this is another reason for us to understand why forgive the enemy, why to liberate him. We think that we're forgiving him. We're forgiving <coughs> ourselves because we get rid of those chains. We get rid of those binds. They're poisonous. There is a saying that if you think about somebody and you want him to get sick, to get some, you know, break a leg. It's not something that you say on show business. Break a leg, for real. It's just like wanting somebody to die, but you drink the poison. Because you are creating all those feelings inside yourself. The other person is not. So when you create all these feelings, it's poison. It's chemical poison. Fear, adrenaline. Right? Put a lot of adrenaline inside your body, you're going to have a overdose. Overdose is going to charge you in some part of your body, in some organ, and you're going to get sick. And then you say, I don't know, I don't have... I'm, I don't have luck. I get sick all the time. You don't have luck, or you don't, you don't have vision, or you don't have patience to understand what's going on, and why you're repeating the same formula all the time. The greatest <laughs> translation for me, or concept of insanity, comes from Albert Einstein is doing the same thing over and over and trying to get a different result. In that sense, we can say that we can call us sometimes insane. Because we keep repeating the same formula, trying to get a different result. It's not going to work. And we know that. But even so, we try. Maybe. And it's already known that does not liberate us from our enemies. Vengeful spirits in the afterlife frequently pursue with great hate all those for whom they bear rancor. Is this another reason for us to try to get in peace with them? I do think so. Although I'm a spiritist, although I did the medium's uh, uh, classes, although I give passes, I'm not prepared to see a spirit in front of me. 
you know, and think, you know, I'm <laughs> spared from that because I'm not prepared. So even if it's a good one, imagine a bad one. And come say, yeah, I came here to really make your life miserable. Say, ah, thank you. you yeah. Or, well, sometimes you feel, right? A choke. Sometimes you hear. Thank, I'm thankful for, you know, being a block of vice and don't have, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not median, I'm extra large. So <laughs> let's stay right there. <laughs> How many times must I forgive my brothers and sisters? Jesus says seven times seven, or seven times seventy. And what he was trying to say, you must forgive without limit. You must forgive each offense many times as it's done to you. Your brothers and sisters on earth must be taught that it is forgive, forgetfulness of self which makes a person invulnerable to attack. Let me repeat it. Sorry, I'm going to get out of the mic for a second. It is forgetfulness of self which makes a person invulnerable to attack. Why? Why? Because of the energy. Because you don't connect to lower spirits. Because your energy is, is high. Because you have the will. It's, it's it within you. To not look for fight. To not look for anger, to not look for aggression. So this is out of your system. You're never going to connect to spirits that have that. And that's the ones that can attack you. So the formula, again, it's simple. We are the ones who complicate it. We need to go back to simple and try to do the best we can. Misbehaviors, so it's forgetting of the self that makes a person vulnerable to attacks, misbehaviors, and in insults. In short, you must do whatever you wish the celestial father to do for you. He not, does he not, is he not frequently forgiven you? Have you by any chance counted how many times his pardon has come down to erase your shortcomings? Ooh, I will need an accountant. <laughs> I, I will need a, uh, I won't, because my balance is going to be very negative. So most of us don't want to see that. But yes, how many times we have our shortcomings, and all of a sudden that goes and doesn't, you know, create the problems that they, it could. This is the forgiveness of the Father. So why don't we try to forgive the others just because we've been forgiven so much? Just because we be immune, invulnerable to attacks? Just because we're not going to have nobody on the spiritual world looking at us trying to make us harm, to do us harm, only try to help us? Is this reason enough? I do believe so. To forgive one's enemies, to ask for forgiveness for oneself. I love this, this sentence. You're not forgiving somebody, you're forgiving yourself. To be able to forgive of offense is to show yourself better than you were. Moreover, if you search deeper down inside, Perhaps you will find that it's yourself who is the aggressor. Again, it's a matter of perception. You think you're being offended, but probably you offend before. And you don't recognize that. But if you really search within your memories, you're probably going to find out that you started. Or you just kept it going. And now you're playing the good the goody two shoes. You're playing the, the nice guy, the nice girl. Not even you believe in that. <coughs> Complete and absolute forgiveness of all offense peculiar to great, is peculiar to great souls, whereas rancor is always a sign of baseness and inferiority. 
So don't, do not forget that true pardon is recognizable for its acts. True, true pardon is recognizable for its acts rather than by the use of mere words. People say that vision without action is hallucination. And that's the main thing. This is the main example. Don't say, and just because people are around you that you are nice, that you're going to forgive, and all of a sudden they turn their back and start talking bad about that person. You're not trying to fool anybody. You're trying to fool yourself. That doesn't work. That does not work. Because it charges. That is a, 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 a tale that when the, the employees came to the company, they had a big sign. Today, the person that was creating a lot of problems to you, that was avoiding you to grow, die. The ceremony and the cask will be in the, in the, mid, uh, in the restaurant, which was the be best place, the biggest place that they have, for you guys to give the last uh, thoughts. And everybody of the company went there to look at the cask. Who was there inside? People go there, look inside, and get out quiet, silent. Everybody was doing the same. The person that was telling the tale said that when they got, he got to the, the cask, there was a mirror. The person that is creating a lot of trouble for you, die. Say goodbye. That is awesome. That is the best way to represent what we need to do. Get out of this saboteur. Get out of this mindset. Understand the power of, forgive, of forgiving. Understand the power of having great thoughts. Understand the power of focus. Change your life. This is not a spiritist guy, but this is Tony Robbins. I think everybody knows Tony Robbins. Change your focus, focus and see your life change. That is true. That is true to everybody that tries to do that. Forgiveness, forgiveness is not just about saying the words. It's an active process in which you make a conscious decision to let go negative feelings, whether the person deserves or not. Why? If you keep negative feelings inside of you, who's, who's paying the bill? Yeah. But we keep these this negative feelings just for fun? <laughs> just because we like it? Just because it's nice? No, because we don't think about it. We don't realize how bad it is. So if you cannot do it because you're feeling that, at least do it for yourself. So it's a conscious decision. It's conscious. I'm doing that to heal myself. And with this process, I can help everybody, including the person that I think that is an enemy, that is an adversary. So this is not spiritism anymore. This is medicine. Studies have found that the act of forgiveness can heap huge rewards for your health, lowering the risk of heart attack, improving cholesterol. Who here has high cholesterol? And sleep. Who sleeps? Who has problems sleeping? Reducing pain, blood pressure. Nobody has a high blood pressure but me, right? Yeah, thank you. Levels of anxiety, nobody's anxious. Nobody. Depression, wow. Stress, what is stress? Everybody's happy, you know, everybody works. Let it go. It's another, it's another speech. And research points to an increase in the forgiveness health connection as you age. 
Chronic anger puts, into, puts you into a fight or flight mode, which result in numerous changes of heart rate, blood pressure, and immune response. Those changes then increase the risk of depression, heart disease, diabetes. Again, check. Among other conditions, forgiveness, however, calms stress level leading to improved health. So when speakers say that they did this whole study for themselves, it's not fake. It's totally truth. Because we are the first ones to understand. <gasps> okay. Thank you. So let me try to improve myself. Otherwise, it's not going to be nice. The proof is all in front of us. We just need to change. We just need to go one step further and say, yeah. Maybe, you know how the... Um, how you call the AA here? AA? AA? How you call the AA here? AA. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. It's pretty much the way I think. Okay. So they have this, this saying, only today I'm not going to drink. Why don't we say to ourselves, only today I'm going to forgive? Because it's hard to forgive all the time, right? But what if only today? And then tomorrow you come. And only today, I'm going to forgive. That is quite a, a same saying in Brazil at the, the bakery stores, because they're normally owned by Portuguese uh, bakers. And they say that the free, the free meal, you can ask for a free meal tomorrow. And tomorrow you come, and the same is there. And tomorrow you come, and the same is there. So you're never going to get a free meal. <laughs> only tomorrow. It's the same. So only today... I'm going to try to forgive. Only today I'm going to forgive. And tomorrow you repeat the same. And tomorrow you repeat the same. And all of a sudden, you are forgiven a lot more than you were. And we are the ones who's going to feel the benefits of that. Of course, everybody around us will feel, but we will feel that. And this is awesome. This is a decision that we have to make. Adversary, normally is taken as a uh, enemy, but there is some other uh, meanings or synonyms. Opponent in a contest, lighter, right? Than enemy, opponent in a contest. I don't need to hate him. I don't need to be afraid of him. I don't need to pass out when I look at his face. He's an opponent, so we're gonna have different points of view and we're going to talk about it. We must understand that for a long time, we will have to live with the need of criticism. Who's better to criticize us than people that don't like us too much? Because if you ask your best friend, hmm, she's sugarcoat your pill and it's not going to work. The exercise of criticism arose from the evolutionist point of view. The instinct of preservation of territory necessary in the struggle of survive. Jesus speaks of the necessary forgiveness for the good of those who feel offended, but the benefits also extend to the offender since the offender of the moment has almost always been the offended or felt like that. So it's a mutual benefit. It's not just for us. It's not just for him. It's for both of us. That makes it a lot more easier to try. But we need to have this kind of perspective. We need to have this kind of vision. Otherwise, the first thing that comes to our minds is, what's there for me? Why are you asking me this? What's there for you? Less stress, less cholesterol, <laughs> good sleep, uh, heart rate, blood pressure. Nothing that really matters, right? Nothing that is important. Everything is for us when we decide. But we need to decide. So I'm going to end up, normally I end up with a sentence from a spiritist. Um, 
person or a spirit, but I love this sentence from Abraham, Abraham Lincoln. I do not destroy my enemies when I make them. Do I not destroy my enemies when I make them my friends? So you destroy by love. It's really not a destruction. It's a change. It's a change in concept. It's a change in feeling. It's a change in understanding. And we are capable of doing this. But we need to consciously decide, I want to do this. Thank you very much.